All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Go ahead and jump to your steps folder in your module directory and select number seven, hook form alter. In this example, what we're going to do is show how to modify an existing form with our module. So go ahead and open this up and copy all of the code and paste it into your input.module file, overriding everything that's there. So hopefully you've watched some of the previous videos where we've talked about hooks. But the basic idea of a hook is that Drupal will go and look for functions that have a particular structure and call them before certain crucial parts of the execution process. And one of these parts is during the building of a form, before the form is rendered, it goes and looks for any functions that are defined by modules to alter the structure of those forms. So this is another reason why having a structured array, a render array for a form is a good idea. Our goal with this version, I'm gonna jump back to the browser here, is to take anything that's input into this search form here that's enabled by default when you install Drupal and save it into an array so that later on we can use it as suggestions as somebody is typing in an item in the search box. So the way we do that is by defining a function called hook form alter. So this takes the structure of any hook where the module is the prefix and then the name of the hook is occurring after that. So the name is input underscore form underscore alter. And this function takes three parameters. The first is the form. So this is the structured array that gets passed to the rendering function. The form state, which is passed whenever the form moves from one state to another. So during the validation phase or the submission phase, the value in form state will change. And finally, the form ID, which is the name given to each form. It's a unique ID that corresponds to the function name that supplies the render array for the form. So notice that the first two parameters here, both form and form state, are being passed as a reference. You can tell by the ampersand at the beginning of the variable. And so any changes that we make to these two parameters within the function will get passed to the parent function as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is check for a particular form. If we don't check for a particular form, then any functionality that we add in this function will get added to every form. So we're gonna use a switch statement because oftentimes a form alter will check for multiple different forms and assign different functionality to each one. So in order to prepare for this type of structure, a switch statement is a little more efficient than an if-then statement. And we're switching based on the form ID, and we're gonna check for the case of search block form. Now this is the name of our form. You can find the form ID for a particular form in a couple of different ways. The first is to add a statement inside of this form alter function that prints out to the browser the name of each form ID. So that way you can then look at the browser source code and pick the ID that looks like it corresponds to the form that you want to alter. The second is to use Firebug in Firefox and inspect the form. So I'm going to right click on this section here and I'm going to select the inspect element which will jump up the Firebug dialog down at the bottom of the screen here. And it says we're in a div right here and inside of this div is going to be a form. So I'm gonna keep opening this until I get to the form item. So this form is given an ID, and the ID is the ID that we're looking for in our form alter function, but instead of using dashes, it uses underscores. So all we need to do is copy this item here, and then paste it into our form alter function and replace the dashes with underscores. Okay. So in this case, the search block form form, what we're going to do is add a submit function. And this submit function will go ahead and track anything we enter into the search box and save that into an array that we can use later. So I mentioned earlier when we were talking about submit functions that there's two different ways to add submit functions. 
One is to take the function name that defines the render array for the form and add underscore submit to it. And the second is this. What we're doing is taking an attribute that's passed to form directly. So note that this is to form and not to an element inside of form. And we're adding an item to it. Note that if we, instead of adding an item to this array by using these empty brackets at the end of the submit array, if instead of that we assign submit an array and we pass it input search submit, what it will do is reset the submit array. So basically what we're doing is taking the submit array and overriding it completely. So if any modules had defined a submit function before this point, they will disappear and the only submit function that will get used is input search submit. Normally what we want to do is add the item to the submit array instead. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the submit function. So just like in our previous submit function, two variables are being passed as parameters to it, the form array and the form state array, which is being passed by reference. We're taking a variable called phrase and we're assigning it the value that's being passed in the search block form input. So if we pause the execution here, either by doing some type of debugging through PHP or the devel module or with a debugger, we'll see that in this form state value, search block form is the name of the input that, if we jump back to our browser, is right here. Okay, so we're assigning the value of that to phrase. Next, what we're doing is getting a variable using variable get and this is the variable that we're going to use to save previous searches. So we're assigning it an array by default because we want to add to it as an array. Next, we're just adding the phrase that got submitted to the search history variable. And finally, we're saving that variable again. So each time a user uses this form, this input search history will grow by one item. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure that our module is saved and then jump back to the browser. And let's go ahead and input a search and submit it. So as we expected, a, a little alert shows up here at the top that says our phrase has been saved to history. If you wanted to, you could track the data that's being saved through these searches by looking at the variables table inside of your Drupal database but let's go ahead and move on to the next step and do something useful with that information.